Hi, I'm Nona Melkonian with SFGov TV. I'm here to discuss Proposition B, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 5th. Propositions B and C both concern a proposed development site called 8 Washington Street. Prop B is an initiative and Prop C is a referendum. An initiative is a proposition placed on the ballot by voters. A referendum is the process by which voters can approve or reject legislation enacted by the Board of Supervisors. 8 Washington Street is a site proposed for development and is 3.2 acres bound by the Embarcadero, Washington Street, and Drum Street. In 2012, the Board of Supervisors approved a development project for this site involving construction of two mixed-used buildings containing 134 residential units, ground floor retail space, a privately operated fitness and swim facility, a public park and open spaces, and underground public and private parking. In approving the project, the board also adopted an ordinance to increase the legal building height limits on a portion of the project. The Prop C referendum requires that this ordinance be submitted to the voters for approval or rejection. The ordinance will not take effect unless a majority of voters vote in favor of it. If you vote yes on Proposition C, you want the ordinance passed by the Board of Supervisors, which increases legal building height limits along Drum Street to take effect. If you vote no, you do not want the ordinance passed by the Supervisors, which increases legal building height limits along Drum Street to take effect. Prop B, which also concerns the 8 Washington site, qualified for the ballot after Prop C. Prop B would create a special use district known as the 8 Washington Parks, Public Access, and Housing District. The district would require the project to include two buildings with a total of 121 to 141 residential units, an increase in the legal building heights along Drum Street from 84 feet to 92 feet in one section and to 136 feet in another section, a privately owned fitness and swim facility, a height limit of six stories for the residential building along the Embarcadero, payment by the developer to the City of San Francisco Affordable Housing Fund, a public park, open space, walkways and sidewalks on at least 20% of the site, new and expanded pedestrian access to the waterfront and enhanced bicycle and pedestrian safety, ground floor retail and cafes, an underground private and public car and bicycle parking, and increased revenue to the port and the city. If you vote yes on Proposition B, you want to approve the 8 Washington Street Site Development Project. If you vote no on Proposition B, you do not want to approve the 8 Washington Street Site Development Project. I'm here with Alec Bash, former member of the Planning Department and a proponent of Proposition B and C. Welcome. Thank you, Nona. We're also joined by Luis Rennie, former city attorney and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. I'd like to start with Mr. Bash. Why are you for this proposition? I'm for this proposition because I've cared a lot about the San Francisco waterfront as a planner for about 30 years in the city and using the waterfront. And I see this as a real opportunity to open up the waterfront by opening up streets that were closed in the dark redevelopment days when the Embarked Era Freeway was here blocked by a tall fence around a private club and further made ugly by a port parking lot. And these are not the best uses possible on the waterfront. What we need to have in these three blocks is open vital spaces, parks, housing over retail, shops, cafes, restaurants. We need to enliven these three blocks along the waterfront and turn them into something that is really a benefit for people walking along and enjoying the Embarcadero. Thank you. Ms. Rennie, why are you against this proposition? Well, we are urging a no vote on both Proposition B and C because, number one, it changes the height all along this parcel of the waterfront to almost double the size of the freeway that was torn down. It also is bulky as a football field. So instead of opening up the waterfront, as you're walking along the waterfront, a lot of your views of Coit Tower and Telegraph Hill will be restricted. Number three, it sets a precedent 
for heights and increasing the heights along the waterfront because there are three other parcels along the northern waterfront which would be ripe for the same kind of development. It destroys a tennis and club that's been used by thousands of San Franciscans for years and as importantly it's being built too close to a sewer line with great risk to the sewer pipe that serves a quarter of the city. Height bulk, sewer risk, precedent. And then to top it all off in Proposition B, which was written by the developer, the developer gets special rules to approve his project. If that isn't enough for people to vote no on B and C, I think it is. Thank you. Mr. Bash, it seems there's been some confusion between voters regarding Prop B and C. Why was Proposition B added later when Prop C is asking for the approval of 8 Washington? Proposition C only asks for approval of the height limits. It says nothing about the project itself. And we thought that it was critical that the voters be able to see what the whole project was with all of the benefits it brings to the waterfront. As to the heights, only a small fraction of the site has a higher height limit. Most of it, 85% is much lower than the heights that are uh, that have been allowed on the waterfront and in fact uh, as you look at the model you can see that the project is really very modest in its heights in comparison with the tall buildings around it which are twice and four times as large the only special procedures that have been put in place for this project because this is the same project that the board of supervisors approved is to have a special administrative clearance which adds a level of review to ensure that whatever planning reviews is the same as what the voters have approved. So that's why we are urging yes on both B and C. Okay, thank you. I think the real answer to that question is number one, if the developer addressed the sole question of whether or not people want to increase height limits, almost double the size of the freeway, the vote would clearly be no. And in a referendum, which the citizens, 30,000 citizens, put on the ballot, that is the only question they can really put in. The reason they put on Proposition B was a way to get around having to address the height limits itself, although B does have that in there. But did they address, even in their title, the height or the bulk of the building along the waterfront? No. Instead, they called it parks, housing initiative, access to the free to the Embarcadero. And even in their advertising, any of their advertising in their door hangers or in their TV ads, do they mention the building? Do they address the height? Do they address the bulk? No. Instead, they try to address other issues, which I am happy to explain are red herrings. Thank you. Mr. Bash, would you like to respond? I would. Um, everywhere I go, I talk about the height, I talk about the buildings. We have nothing to hide. The idea is to put the whole project out there. It's the other side that wants to hide what the project really is, to focus only upon heights and to ignore the fact, as you look at this model, that there are some real park spaces being created here, some real opportunities to enjoy the waterfront. And talking about red herrings, uh, what, uh, what Louise Rennie mentioned about the sewer, that is a redundant sewer system that the city is adding. The project sponsor is helping by providing an easement for it. They are going to work closely with the engineers at the PUC, Public Utilities Commission of the city, which has already by unanimous vote uh, indicated their approval of going forward with the plans that there are now. So uh, talking about red herrings and misleading campaigns, remember the comment, where's the beef? Well, I have to say, where's the wall? Where's the wall on the waterfront that the adversaries talk about? The Embarcadero Freeway, they put out a flyer that shows the Embarcadero Freeway half the height of the 70-foot building, the six-story building along the waterfront, whereas in fact, from the image that they have, it should be looking much higher. They have been very misleading in all of their campaign literature. They talk about height alone, and they ignore all the benefits on the waterfront. Thank you. Ms. Rennie, would you like to respond to Well, Mr. we have Bash's only comments? used the developer's own drawings to depict the building. 
And if you, again, I insist, if you take a look at any of the advertising or campaign literature being put forward by the Proposition B folks, it doesn't address the height, it doesn't show any renderings of the building, and if you're going to stand in Sue Bierman Park, believe me, it is a wall, and as you're walking along the waterfront, it is a wall. And as I say, this sets the precedent for on down the northern freeway. Frankly, I think this is a fight for the future of the northern waterfront. And as to the sewer, I didn't make that up. There was an independent engineering report, which frankly was buried in City Hall until two days after all the environmental review processes came out, and only because a whistleblower came forward did we even find out about it. So I think there are serious planning issues here, and even as to the model, it's very interesting. After some of those high buildings were built, including some in the financial district, which are far back from the waterfront, citizens back in, uh, several years ago were in an uproar. And that's why, as you look along the northern waterfront, you see the lower height limits. You had the Fontana Towers, which served as a precedent, a wake-up call to people. We've got to protect our northern waterfront. And I think a no vote on B and C is absolutely critical as a wake-up call to all of San Francisco, hey, we want to protect our northern waterfront. That's why the Sierra Club, Coalition of Neighbors, the Democratic Party, affordable housing folks are all in support of a no vote on Proposition B and C. Thank you. Mr. Bash, any thoughts? Yeah, there's a lot of support for Proposition B and C from, from Spur, Smart Planning, Labor, um, several other Democratic clubs. Uh, uh, th there are a huge number of people who want to improve the waterfront and are not afraid of the scare, tax scare tactics that are being used. Trying to compare this with the Fontana Towers is absurd. This is right at the edge of downtown. And the reason that the planning department first suggested having higher heights on this site is because of the proximity of the tall buildings nearby. All the other port properties on the waterfront have low buildings nearby. They have got 40 foot height limits. The city's general plan calls for 40 feet on all those other properties. Planning department calls for 40 feet. The idea that this is going to set any precedent is a scare tactic, and I'm surprised that opponents are stooping to that. They're saying no wall on the waterfront and trying to compare it with the embarked air freeway. What you see is what you get if you look at the model. You can see the benefits it offers to people, San Francisco. Ms. Rennie, you're shaking your head. Well, look, we're talking about 134 luxury condos on the waterfront. There's a lot of money involved here, and only a few people that are going to be able to live in those condos. So this idea that we're opening up the waterfront is bizarre. And consequently, it does set a, a, a precedent. That's why, too, they'll say, oh, we're going to bring parks. Well, guess what? You know what their new parks are? There's an open space at the corner. They're going to add a little more space, like the size of a tennis court. That's their new parks. And so this idea that somehow or other this initiative is about parks or housing, it's certainly not affordable housing. Yes, by law, they're required to put in $11 million for affordable housing elsewhere. But it's not about housing. It's only rich people's housing. And number three, opening up the waterfront, what they're doing, there's already a little curlicue path. What they're doing is just kind of moving this over and straightening it out. So. Our argument is actually this is not opening up the waterfront. Certainly for the public walking along the, the Embarcadero, it is restricting the waterfront. Thank you both very much for your time. Do you have any final thoughts? We have about a minute. Mr. Yeah, Bash. Um, the project does make an $11 million contribution to the Affordable Housing Fund. That's more than the city would normally ask for. That is equivalent to 34 units coming, affordable units coming out of the 134 market rate units. Uh, this is a real opportunity for the city and the park spaces that are being added, 30,000 square feet, which is the size of about 12 city lots. It's three times the size of the Noe Valley Town Square that people have worked so hard for. All right, thank you.
Ms. Rennie. This fight is really about the future of the northern waterfront. Do we want to have a northern waterfront that is open and available for people? The answer, we think, is yes, but vote no on B and C. If you really want to protect the northern waterfront, please vote no on B and C. Otherwise, we're going to have high rises that are not in keeping with the spirit of San Francisco. Okay, thank you both for your comments. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We hope that this discussion was informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit San Francisco Election Department's website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on November 5th.